Man, this thing just gave me a notice saying that trying to reconnect, you have a poor connection. So I'm not totally sure if this thing is on yet. I'm going to trust that it is. <laughs> it's usually that way, ain't it? It's like, dude, so every week you're like not even sure if you got a connection. <laughs> oh, man. But you know what? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to assume that we are on. And uh, one of these days, I don't know, man, maybe one of these days I'll have a budget to be able to... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Uh, you know that where I'll be able to do these and make sure that I have a a, a solid connection to, to to get on with you guys. But uh, anyway, I'm hoping that we are going. And uh, so you guys just go ahead and get your behind up in here, you heathens. <laughs> let's just go ahead and see what we can do this thing. And uh, you know, let's fellowship and let's pray for each other. Uh, I saw uh, Doc uh, has a, uh, a prayer request, if you guys can see it in there, and, uh, you know, show him some love, you know, call on the Lord to smile on him, and his, uh, you know, and help him through uh, this concern that he has. And, and while, while, you know, if I may, um, if I may, uh, I'll, I'll even give a, um, express a concern that I have. Uh, and, and showing uh, some some sympathy for it, uh, a doc situation really quick. Uh, my woman's CJ, uh, you know that groovy chick who be chiming in sometimes. Um, you know she um, she has chronic pain, right? And uh, so bad that you know sometimes she has to go up on like a you know and not, as well as uh, acute asthma. So, uh, you know, and I know one of the questions, well, where's your God in this? Um, well, check this out. Uh, because of, you know, these, these, uh, afflictions, she's on high, you know, she takes high doses of prednisone, really high, you know, kind of high. So where it's like, you know, pharmacists be looking at her freakishly, like, be like, is this right? Do you take this much prednisone? Even the doctors be like, you know, they look at her medical history. It's like, what's up with all this prednisone? Well, she's she's um, resistant to it, but she at the same time she needs it. It's like pretty much one of the only things she can take. Um, so being and she hates it, you know, because you know if anybody's experienced with you know prednisone, you know that it puffs up your face, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and uh, you know can tend to make people you know kind of insecure. And uh, so she hates having to take it, you know, and, and uh, you know, and then there's the side effects of it, you know, you know, messing around with your adrenal glands and things like that, and. Um, so, you know, I get worried about her taking it, especially in the doses that she has to take it in because, you know, she's resistant, you know, so she has to take a lot. Well, long story short, you know, when people are wondering if, if God is looking out for us and if God, you know, uh, doesn't manage to, um, you know, do things despite our troubles, God doesn't give us our troubles. He's the one, you know, he warned us about this. Like, look, you know, the world's going to suck now. You know, I didn't mean this for you, but you know, this is the world that you got now. And, uh, now I can help you through it, you know, but you got to remember this is earth. This ain't heaven. You know, you don't get to, you, you're not going to, you know, suffering is not going to be a thing in the past until you, until, until heaven, you know, reigns and, uh, or until you're, you're, uh, you know, until you're in the kingdom. And, um, so, you know, until then, you know, I'm sorry, the suffering is going to be, the, uh, uh, you know, part of life now. Um, but, you know, just to show that God hasn't completely abandoned us, um, uh, CJ, you know, woke up and had this bump, you know, over her eye. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, she was like, asking me, what is this? What is it? And, you know, and so I'm like, well, looking at it, you know, a little red, you know, but it's got a, you know, she got a bump there. I'm like, wow, you know, I wonder if you got bit by a mosquito or something like that. You know, and she's like, it really hurts. Like, oh, sometimes those mosquito bites, can, they can be pretty painful. You know, they get a good suck on you and you, <laughs> it's like, ouch, you know, you, be, you might have a little headache. Uh, so after like a couple days, you know, this thing wasn't going down, you know, she's, you know, trying to treat it and whatnot. And it's like, you know, it's really, you know, it's getting got, kind of getting bigger, you know, getting a little more inflamed and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, finally, we're just like, you know, maybe you need to go to uh, urgent care. So she goes to urgent care and they study it. And then and, um, turns out that looks like the suspect was a bite from a recluse from a brown recluse so and i'm like i never would have figured it out because you know anybody knows about a brown recluse you know they got that what's was that um uh, it's like it gives your skin like necropathy or something like that i'm not sure if i'm using the term right but it, it's you know it's that the hematoxin eat your behind up 
right? You get bit by a brown recluse. That thing, you know, this that thing just keeps it. It bites you, and it's, it's it's like it's still it goes off somewhere, and it's still eating you somehow, just eating your skin up, right? So that should have happened to 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 my woman, right? She got this bump on her head. That bite should have gone all down into her eye, you know, get all that messed up, you know, get and, and uh. Uh, basically what comes down to this, the doctor said the reason why it hadn't is because you've been on such high doses of prednisone. So the Lord was protecting Carrie even in her problem, right? Because has she not been on those high doses of prednisone? Her eye would have just been, I don't even know if she could, we could, if we could even save her eye because it bit her right above her eye, right? So, you know, the Lord... You know, he, he, he works, you know, with, with the troubles that we have. And, uh, but he didn't promise us that we wouldn't have trouble. We're going to face, you know, suffering, going to face some heartaches and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not trying to, you know, uh, put on some rosy colored glasses or anything like that. The sad truth of it is, it's like, you know, we're going to deal with things that's going to make it, it's going to make us hurt. And, uh, but we got to remember that the Lord warned us of this. And we got to remember that this is earth. This ain't heaven. Um, things are going to hurt us. They're going to hurt our bodies. They're going to hurt our hearts. They're going to hurt our minds. Um, the best chance that we have is to hold on to the Lord. You hold on to him to get us through. You know, he's not going to spoon feed uh, uh, um, daisies and, and, um, and, and candy to us. That ain't how it is. Um, you know, the, the, what, what we got to do is just hang on to it because ultimately he is the one who will make everything straight. You know, we all we, we, we want this, you know, this wonderful world, you know, where there's no suffering and there's no pain and there's no death. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I want that world, too. Um, but I trust in the one you could actually give it to who proved he proved it. It's like, yeah, I can actually, you know, I go to prepare a place for you. And uh, I came back to let you know, you know, this is recorded history. y'all. Whether people want to believe it or not, it's, it's it, they were, it was witnessed, came back to prove it. You know, I'm going to make a place for you. Came back and says, hey, remember I said I'm going to make a place for you? Well, I came back from the dead just to remind you, I'm that dude who can do that. So if we want this world where there will be no more suffering, no more, no more death, no more headache, no more heartache and stuff like that, lean on the Lord because ultimately he is going to make do on his promise that he wrote to us in blood. All right, so uh, with that, let's see where we at, where we at. Hey, you guys might have noticed I am in a different setting. I am, I am out of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm away on business. And um, people will be like, well, what kind of business? I'm, I'm in a hotel right now. Uh, I'm being vetted for a project. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, away, I'm away on business. And you're like, what kind of business you doing where you need a hotel? What are you being vetted for? So, hey, you just, you, you watch it. You chill. And, and, and after this, there's not going to be some wild rock star party. I don't want. I can't. I can't give away like what it is I'm up, I'm up to. I'm not allowed to disclose uh, this project that I'm being vetted for. Uh, but uh, you know. But regardless of which, you know, after after I'm doing my Bible study, uh, I'm I'm just gonna kick back and I'm gonna watch Columbo. All right. I'm, I, if I can find it, hopefully it's playing in this area. So hopefully it can. But I, I still got some. I got rehearsing and stuff that I got to do tonight anyway. But anyway, but keep, hopefully uh, you guys will keep me in my prayers. In your prayers uh, that this will this will work out well. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> just thought I'd share that with you. So if I'm missing some things, like my sledge mug that that uh my my good buddy uh, Melissa got for me. Uh I don't have my sledge mug with me and I don't have my 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 uh for, since I'm reading Old Testament tonight, a chapter from the Old Testament, I don't have my my Jewish family Bible with me. I've got to but it's I'm in a hotel which fortunately came stocked with a Bible, so I'm at least I'm glad I got that so I can um you know, I'll still I'll still be able to conduct a, a trip with y'all. So but so bear with me. Uh I will do my best. You know, it's always the Lord doing it anyway, because this knucklehead can't do it right on his own. That's for sure. And uh, so let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can get out of chapter five. We're in Genesis five. Let's see what we can get out of it. Uh, all right. No, and, and this is going to be this is going to be genealogical. So we're, geneal genealogical. Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, you know, so we're just going to be reading a bunch of names. But let's see what we can get. Let's see what we get. OK. Chapter five, Genesis. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. 
<laughs> oh, just really quick. I want to say hi to you. Mr. Matthew, see Matthew in there. Grace, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Carol Ann, Gary, how you doing? All right. Okay. Thank you guys for, for coming to trip with us. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Now, it's letting you know, God had already made Adam and Eve, you know, in his likeness. And, you know, that it's like they lost sight of that. You know, when the devil came in to accuse God of holding out on him, and bear in mind, that's what Satan means. His name means the, the accuser, the slanderer, not just not just the deceiver. A slanderer. He's a false accuser. So he falsely accuses God. And this broke the trust, right? Tapped into, into, into Eve's feminine pride. You know, and, and, and uh, Adam just stood there, just mesmerized and, and didn't do nothing. Didn't call on the counsel of God or nothing. Just just let this whole thing just transpire. Um, but they knew right and wrong. They knew what right and wrong was. They just didn't, they weren't wise in what's good and evil. In order for them to be wise in what was good, uh, what was good and what was evil, they actually had to experience it. So now they, they, they looked at, they knew what was right and what was wrong. And then when they actually did what was wrong on purpose, that's when it became evil. Um, so they were already, they lost sight of, you're already in the likeness of God. You're already as pretty, you're pretty much already as wise as you need to be. And they got suckered into thinking that they could be as wise as God, if not wiser. So, you know, we, it's, I guess it's maybe it's one of those things we're saying. It's like, you know, sometimes you need to know when to leave well enough alone. Sometimes people just get greedy. It's, it's good to have, you know, to, to be motivated, to, to want to grow and things like that. You know, growing your crafts, growing your intellect. Uh, you know, growing in, uh, you know, in abilities that you have, that's fine. Um, but I guess growing, you know, when your growth is motivated by covetousness, you know, like the Joneses and stuff like that, when you got that kind of motivation where you want to grow and things like that, because you're not even inspired by somebody else, you're just, you're, you're envious of them or something, coveting their status and whatnot. That's when it goes dysfunctional. And that's what went down with Adam and Eve. You know, they, 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 it was like I said, they didn't know when, when to leave well and alone to be content. You know, it's not, and, and people, you'll say that's, well, what do you want people? You want just them to settle? You don't want them to grow? It's like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. Consider what is the motivation of you wanting to grow? Like we got people out there, you know, it's like a, it's, it's a war to, to who's the most informed. You know, we get online and we just, we pack ourselves with information. You know, we're always seeking knowledge. You know, and uh, which is fine. It's good that we seek knowledge, but somehow, even with the apparatuses that we have, you know, we get more distant from each other. You know, we can we can connect with the world, you know, at the click of a button. I could talk to somebody on the other side of the world in, in a matter of seconds, you know, but despite all these things, somehow we're becoming less connected with each other, you know, and um you know, there, there, there's there's there like a, a lack of empathy, you know, that people are having towards each other. You know, some people are, are are able to develop, you know, really meaningful friendships. Don't get me wrong. It happens. But in the grand scale of things, it's almost kind of small. You know, the uh, the um, <clears throat> the fellowship that people can have in these remote places compared to the um, compared to the the lack of empathy. Uh, that people could have for each other and, and uh, the lack of uh, that, that camaraderie and real connection that people have. Um, so, you know, we, we get these things because we're in such a pursuit of knowledge. You know, we, we all we all want to be smarter than somebody else. Always want to be smarter. We don't want to look like the idiot in the room. And we're afraid of like, you know, where we'll stand socially with people, how people will think of us and whatnot, because, you know, are, are, are they seeing us as smarter? Well, you're not going to you're not going to play me for a fool. I'm not going to be the fool here. And, uh, you know, we got to be the most informed and even we'll, we'll even throw God under the bus because we don't want people to think that we believe in fairy tales and stuff like that. So you got people out there because they're so afraid of being ostracized by the world 
you know, they'll, they'll forsake God. It's like, no, I, I, well, you know, I, I don't believe everything the Bible says and, 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 and stuff like that. Because knowledge, knowledge becomes more important to them than life. God, who is life, the giver of life, the author of life, he's, he takes a back seat to a person appearing knowledgeable. They forget that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's, it's unfortunate that people don't believe that. So this is, uh, you know, they were created. Adam and Eve, they were already created like God, and they lost sight of that. You know, they, they, they got suckered by this dude who was, who was basically letting them, who was leading them to believe that they were intellectually inferior. Made them, gave them a complex. Oh, what, 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 we, we, wanna, we wanna be smart too, right? We wanna look like we're all Ivy League and whatnot, and, and we're degreed and, and so on and, 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 and stuff. You know, we want to look like we've gone to the most prestigious colleges. You know, we want to have those credentials and, uh, uh, you know, and 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 uh, get all these accolades to make it look like we're the big brains. And what did it cost them? It cost them life. It cost them our lives. And that's what people do when they pursue knowledge, you know, which people call power. And what will people do, you know, for the sake of power? Your life can be forsaken. That's why knowledge is fantastic, guys. I, I never tell anybody to not pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge, but don't do it at the sake of, of valuing life. That's when people, you know, people, they love science, 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 right? I like science too. You know, but while they think that science is all, you know, benevolent and all, and all fantastic and stuff like that, they forget that it's science, you know, is, is what's making the discoveries that are causing people, you know, bad health. You know, they get mad about, you know, the things that are experimented on by animals and, and the stuff that the pharmaceuticals sell to us and, and, and the GMOs and whatnot. All this stuff comes out of research that scientists conduct. You know, all the stuff that people are bitter about that is that is messing up mankind is what science is creating. You know, people go in and they, and they mess around with these chemicals and they mess around with biology and they mess around with, you know, these things, you know, and then they sell it to the public. And the public gets mad while at the same time saying science is king, you know, because people value knowledge more than they value life. And that's already been spelled out to us. So um, Adam and Eve were already in the likeness of God and they, and they, and they lost sight of it because they got suckered into thinking, well, you should be smart, too. It's like, yeah, you should be. But you're not being smart about being smart right now. Uh, you see what I did there? OK. All right. Now. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. All right. So, you know, man, woman, it's the first institution of marriage right there. That is that is it. That's what it is. That's what marriage is. You know what I'm saying? All right. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. OK, so Adam was 130 years old. At this time, like it out now, like I had mentioned earlier, y'all, Adam and Eve weren't in the garden long. The devil came in and screwed that up for them with the quickness, just swooped in, struck like a serpent, put the venom in them, and they and they got kicked out. This happened fast. This basically happened on Adam and Eve's wedding day, right? The Satan just straight up came in and crashed their party, and they ended up getting kicked out. They weren't in the garden long. Not long at all. And then after being kicked out, Adam was about, uh, the, the, after giving, uh, and then with Cain and Abel, and then at, about the time that uh, Adam, uh, Adam, Eve, Adam was about 130 years old, uh, and then Seth. Now, people, you know, I, 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 get, I get people mad at me a lot, uh, and I'll try not to make this too long, you know, when it comes to uh, Seth, because people want to say that Seth was like the godly line of Adam. Right, Seth was the he, the, Seth the, the the children of Seth were the sons of God and stuff like that. And the Bible doesn't say any such thing, not even close. Um, you know, but this is supposed to be the godly line, of, and, and it's like, well, if Seth was in Adam's likeness, well, that means that Seth was a knucklehead like Adam, just like the rest of us. We all knuckleheads. Seth was a knucklehead too, and it says that after Seth begat his son Enosh, I think it was Enosh. That's when people began to call on the name of the Lord. So it wasn't because of Seth. It was after more, it was after the birth of his son. So, but Seth is is credited because people are trying to squeeze Seth and they're trying to make the sons of God the sons of Seth. And they cannot accept the sons of God who are the angels 
They was, these were angels of God. They were the B'nai Elohim. That's what it says. But they try to fit Seth in there. But reading on, I'll, I'm going to touch on that a little more in a second. And people get mad at me about that because, you know, they, they, they just cannot accept that, uh, you know, uh, angels marrying human women, they, they can't accept it. Uh, angels are, are spirits and they have no, no, um, they have no gender or anything like that. It's like, dude, the Bible says no such thing, no such thing. Um, so anyway, uh, after he begat, uh, Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years and he had sons and daughters. And I remember when I was first coming to the faith, y'all, um, uh, I'll try to make this short too. When I was, uh, I was putting a story together and I was putting it together on the story of Noah. Uh, and I was even agnostic at the time, but I wanted to do a story on uh, Noah. And one of the things that I, I, I got hung up with was his age. And uh, I'll tell you all a little bit more about that sometime. But, you know, just to uh, kind of throw that out there. But um, these ages that they, that they would have. Uh, after he begat Seth, the days of uh, Adam were 800 years. And he had sons and daughters. Um so all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Wow, guys. There was a time when mankind lived upwards of 1,000 years, almost 1,000 years. Okay? Um, and that's, that's really fascinating to me. And, I, and like I said, I'll, I'm going to talk about that more at length, um, probably in another study, story or something like that, uh, uh, not, uh, another uh, chapter. Um, this is, it's, it's very fascinating to me, very, very, very fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so all the days of Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Seth lived 105 years and begat Enosh. After he begat Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. Enosh lived 90 years and begat Canaan. After he begat Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. Mahalalel. Yeah, I said it right. Mahalalel. All right. <clears throat> After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years, and he had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. After he begot Jared, and Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. And, and when he, you guys might want to do this if you haven't already. Take this genealogy and run it by, you know, like in uh like like by the genealogy of Luke. All right, so it's 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 right here. It's 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 giving you history. You know, people don't want to, they don't want, they want to believe, they want to believe secular history. And what cracks me up, and I'll, I'll say this again, this is what cracks me up. We don't want to believe the Bible because it's man-made. Okay, so you go ahead and believe the other historical uh, accounts of others, you know, these accounts that are also man-made. But, okay, it's, it's a selective you know, prejudice against what's man-made or what's assumed to be man-made. It's like, no, dude, there's a difference between what's man-made and what's God-breathed, okay? Recorded by men, yes. Breathed by God. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's take it to uh, 17. Yeah, 17. Uh, no, let's go 16. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 800 and 30 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared, now watch this. Okay, after he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. All right. We're, a lot of us are familiar with that. Enoch was taken by God. He was raptured. If you look at the word for taken, it's laukuk. It means he was seized. 
right? God seized him. He snatched him away from the earth in a flash, flashed him north. Um, so I think it's when people try to say that the sons of God were the sons of Seth. Well, remember, guys, the same word that the, that's used for the sons of God that took wives uses the same language, Laukuk. Okay? The angels came and seized brides. Brides. It, they, they snatched them upwards. They flashed them north. They were, they were taken in a flash. That's how the angels married them. They came whoosh, and snatched them up. The sons of Seth, they're human beings. They can't do that. And then they take into also consideration that the sons of uh, Enoch, okay? now Enoch is, now Enoch is righteous enough. He's so righteous that even God snatches him from the earth. Enoch never died. He was snatched away from the earth. So how is it that Seth is more righteous than Enoch? And Seth is attributed to having these godly sons who would marry these wives and have children with them who would be these blood-feeding giants. That doesn't make any sense. And, and the Bible doesn't even say that, but that's what people think. So now Enoch, and, and people, they, they put all this stigma on, on sex and procreation and marriage and stuff like that. Like it's, like it's such a sinful thing. This kind of holier-than-now, pious, you know, mindset, it, it baffles me. God created sex. Created marriage. It's not evil. So now you got Enoch. It tells you right here, Enoch, you, you like to get busy. He had kids, right? So Enoch, who had sex and had children, was still worthy enough by God to be taken from the earth and snatched into the kingdom of heaven without dying. So now Enoch's children, you well, you would think, well, Enoch's children must have been a godly, righteous line then. How come the children that they had didn't turn out to be these big, blood-feeding giants that the sons of Seth supposedly had? Because that's not what happened. didn't happen that way at all. People are getting these ideas from the Apocrypha. They're reading dubious writings, like from the Book of Enoch. Now, the Book of Enoch supposedly has credibility because it's supposedly written by Enoch, the one snatched away from the earth. But there's the book of Enoch, and then there's Enoch himself. So in the book of Enoch, it tries to say that these fallen angels um, mated with human women, and they had these blood-feeding giants. And that's not what the Bible says at all. Or even in the sense of the, if they're the sons of Seth, which some people think that they have, the Bible says that we can only reproduce after our own kind. Which means that we can't, you, you can't go ahead and give birth to another species. You know, even a, a gigantic species of human, of, 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 of humanoids. Basically what, you know, the, these, this, what the, 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 the Nephilim were supposedly were. Okay? The Nephilim existed, but it did, they didn't exist in the way that people try to make them out to be. And say that they were these children of Seth. If Enoch's children, you know, Enoch who was righteous enough to be taken away from the earth, uh, without dying, if Enoch's children didn't have th these 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 weird children, why would the sons of Seth? I'll tell you why. Because that didn't happen. And the Bible says nothing like that. And people get mad at me when it says, oh man, come on now. You know, don't try to fill in the blanks with our own human sense of righteousness and what's spiritual and, and, and what's holy and stuff like that. Don't do that. Jesus hates that. You know, take it from what the Bible says. Um, so now there's, there's there, uh, that little bit on um, Enoch, okay, and then Enoch, now also, we're going to, going through, what do we got? We got Methuselah, Enoch, and then we're going to go to Lamech. Let me take it from 23. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Oh, oh, so, so Darla, Zell, how you doing, y'all? Thanks for, thanks for showing up. Uh, Lamech lived <clears throat> 100 years. <clears throat> sorry. Um, Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his son and he called his name Noah, saying, this one will comfort us.
concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And really quick, so Methuselah, um, Methuselah's name alludes to um, a spear, um, a knife, or uh, yeah, or spear. And um, and I think also his name means um, um, will not will not pass until he sees judgment. This is what his name alludes to. It's like I'm gonna be here until I see uh, the onset of judgment, uh, and also the spear. So now, once once again, guys, we're always looking for pictures of Christ because that's what the Old Testament does. You know, it's basically pointing us to the one who's going to save us all. Uh, and we want to make sure that we know who he is. That's why we have the Old Testament. So we'll know who he is and we're not, we're not suckered by some, some uh, a, a false claim. All right. So Methuselah, spear, and will not depart until he sees the onset of judgment. When Jesus died on the cross, and it was to make sure that he was dead and judgment had, been, had come down on him, he was struck with a spear. Uh, also, being that Methuselah is not going to part until he sees, you know, this, this, uh, uh, basically he's going to be comforted by this. He knows that, that uh, judgment is coming, but everything is going to be made new. Now you have Simeon who kind of picks up what Methuselah said concerning Noah. Because Noah, when, when Noah steps onto the scene, he's called the comforter. Noah is the comforter, but at the same time in the day of Noah is when judgment is going to come. So you got this comforter in the day of judge in the days of judgment. So when uh, Jesus steps on the scene, as I'm sorry, not steps on the scene, but as a baby, Simeon gives a prophetic word over him and actually uh, 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 harkens back to the words leaning on Methuselah, because Simeon says, "Your servant has now seen." Our salvation I can depart right he's like you are this it, I'm holding my hand the baby Jesus salvation and judgment I have seen it and now your servant can depart in peace so you got the way Methuselah looked upon Noah and then you got the way Simeon looked upon Jesus salvation and judgment and now I can depart right so um now, also, now here, here's another funny thing. Now, when we talk about the um, the apocrypha and the ideas that people get from these uh, these non canonical books, um, and you know, when people go by these things, that's when you that's when you get evil. You know, the Bible will tell you what you need to know about itself. You don't have to go outside of Scripture. It's good to like you know research the cultures and the history of things and stuff like that. Get that where you can, as long as it squares with the Bible. You know, usually the Bible is the robot itself that other people lean on to confirm what the study that they're doing. It's usually not really the other way around. So, but, um, you know, it's good to know about these cultures and stuff like that, you know. Um, but with, you know, with the Bible itself, you know, when we're talking about uh, trying to trying to fill in the gaps, the things you don't understand. Y'all don't try to lean on your own understanding and try to fill in the blanks with these things. Go to the word. It's in there. Pray about it. Pray to the Lord for, for, for wisdom and insight and how to guide you in reading because the, the Bible reveals, uh, it's, uh, it reveal, will give you revelation to the, its own mysteries. Um, so that being said, you know, uh, people will go outside of it and what you get is evil. Like say, for instance, when it comes to Noah, Noah in, in, in the book of Enoch, um, you know, these things will bring about ethnocentric attitudes. Uh, it will it will do things like drive people away from the Bible at the, while at the same time uh, trying to use Bible, the Bible to validate their claim. Like, say, for instance, in, in the book of Enoch, it tries to credit. It tries to say that um, you'll have. Uh, let me see. How can I put this? How can I put this? Um, where it plays in the ethnocentrism, ethnocentrism is that Noah is said to be white with white hair and blue flashing eyes, right? Uh, and this is when he was a baby. And 
And because of this, it's, it's assumed that um, the white race is a cursed race. Because in the book of Enoch, it tries to say that Noah himself was a Nephilim. So it's already slandering who the Nephilim is, and it's slandering who the sons of God are, and it's putting a different picture on Noah to try to say that the white race is a cursed race. Just like, kind of like the same way that people read the Bible incorrectly, and they'll try to say that the black race is a cursed race because the black race is the son, is, are the descendants of Ham, and the Bible doesn't say that. We're not the descendants of, of, of Ham. We're the, uh, we're, we're the descendants of Cush. We're the descendants of Ham, but we're not from the cursed line of Canaan. We're from the line of Cush. So we'll talk about it at another thing. But you see what I'm saying? People will go into the writings and they'll, and they'll, and they'll look at it and they'll look at it wrong. And what's worse is, is, is they'll look at the Bible, read something, they'll read it wrong. Or they'll go to, to, to wrongful books and even get those things wrong. But anyway, to, in concerning Noah, to try to say that the white race is a cursed race because Noah in the book of Enoch has white skin, blue eyes, I think blue flashing eyes, and white hair. And he's born to, uh, uh, Lamech wasn't his daddy. It says that he was born to um, uh, his uh, to a demon, fallen angels were his father. So Noah was supposedly a Nephilim. And, um, and, but this is where the, the book, uh, book of Enoch even loses more of its credibility because it says that, um, I think it was, it was, sorry, it was either Methuselah or Lamech went and took Noah to Enoch to get his counsel, to get his opinion on this. Now, this is not possible because Enoch was already gone. The Bible says that Enoch was taken and he was no more, which means that you can't go and have a, you can't go have a meeting with Enoch. You can't do it because he was gone. So, the book of Enoch in itself loses its credibility. Um, so that being said, you know, we have to, you know, you got to, you got to seek the Lord's counsel when you read these things, because people will get it twisted. You know, the Bible, you know, this isn't like any other book. It's like, well, one can say that, well, one can say that about any, any book. You can say that about the Quran. Maybe people are reading the Quran incorrectly. Maybe people are reading, uh, you know, uh, the Book of Mormon uh, incorrectly. Or maybe they're reading, you know, um, Book of Mormon probably not be a good example because what are they going to do? They're going to love you to death. Uh, but in a way, actually, I, <laughs> I guess they kind of do. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just have a little fun with y'all. I got Mormon friends. I love y'all. Hopefully I'll <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> he said, that's funny. It's like but between you got the Mormons and you got the Muslim. One's going to love you to death. <laughs> and I guess the other is going to hate you to death. Um, but anyway, uh, one will comfort us. Uh, so you can you can take uh, the Bible itself. And if you read it incorrectly, but the, the Lord has already told you, don't take my name in vain. You know, if you understand who I am, I do not tell you to do things to hurt other people. I don't tell you to do that. Okay? Some people may be hurt by it because, you know, they want to be selfish. And you, if you take away their ability to be selfish, they, they look at you as the bad guy. But it's like, look, your selfishness hurts other people. You know, and if, you're, if your selfishness is, is infringing on other people, then we have, it's not judging you. But none of us are beyond correction. Right? And I got to let you know, I got to tell you the truth. So, um... You know, but this Bible, this book right here doesn't give us instructions on how to hurt people. Uh, unlike, you know, Al-Quran, which does. So, you know, but you can take this book and if you read it incorrectly, yeah, people will get hurt. And that's, that's been done throughout history. You know, people will, will examine this book and for their own selfish reasons will try to apply it to oppress other people. The Bible doesn't give instructions to do that. Um if anything, the worst of it, the Bible will have, the Bible will bring down the hammer on people who are oppressive people. If you're a culture of oppressive people, it's like, yeah, then the Lord will ride against you. You know, but the Lord doesn't come against people just because, oh, you don't believe in me. Oh, well, you know, hey, if they don't believe in me, uh, Israel, I want you to go in and, and cut them down. It's like, no, if you don't believe me, that's right. I'll deal with you later. But I'll deal with you right now if your, black, if your lack of belief in me causes you to do wicked things to other people, forcing people into slavery, sacrificing your kids, other sexual entitlements and oppressive uh, uh, um, uh, institutions that you'll have over people. 
then yeah, I will come against you right now. So that's, you know, that's, that's the Old Testament God. God wasn't just this, this frivolous, you know, uh, uh, genocidal maniac who just felt like killing people. No, the people that he destroyed were straight up wicked, oppressive, murderous people. Those are the people that he came down on. But, you know, it's natural that people, people will see God as the murderer, you know, just like they, they, they don't, they don't see, um, they don't see they they see God as a murderer when he goes and he dispatches a murderous people. And people are like that. It's like, oh, you're the bad guy, you're the real bully. It's like, no, you don't see that these people are the bully that needed to be gotten rid of. And then when we get and you talk about human rights, oh human rights violations. Okay, when you go and deal with the people who are violating people's human right human rights, then you call the people who got them off the back of the other people the bullies. Weird, man. That's just that's just people. And the Bible reads us, man. It tells us that's how we are. Um we got to stop that, man. We don't have to be that way. Don't. Okay. Um, so we were at, and he, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech, were 777 years. There's a, that's that seven thing again, man. Because remember, uh, in the uh, line of Cain, Cain also had uh, a descendant named Lamech, who said that, hey, if Cain is going to be avenged seven times, then Lamech seven, seven, uh, 70 times and sevenfold. Right? So there's that seven, you know, seven thing, right? And then this Lamech right here lived to be 777 years. I haven't quite made the connection there yet, you know, because like I was also including it. Well, you have the number of vengeance, you know, you got seven and then 70 and sevenfold. And then you got this, another Lamech, 70 and seven, uh, 700, uh, sorry, 777 years. And then you have Jesus who says to forgive 70 and sevenfold, right? 70, uh, what was it? Yeah, 70 times sevenfold. So, you know, there, there's that balance between, or that, you know, that thing I'm trying to, you know, reconcile between vengeance and forgiveness with these numbers of seven and concerning Lamech and Jesus. I'm, I'm still trying to piece that together. Um, so let's see, if you guys got something, you know, by all means, sure. All right, and then last verse, and Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. Ham is appropriately named because I guess Ham turned out to be a little bit of a pig. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting into chapter six. Um, that is a very, you know, it's all fascinating to me, but six is uh, especially fascinating. And uh, I'm especially fond of it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in trouble with that one. All right. Well, heck yeah, man. Uh, all right. I'm going to see if uh, Columbo is playing. And uh, let's see. I, 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 that, that show rocks. Um, uh, yeah, keep me in prayer, guys. Like I said, I'm, I'm here being vetted for a project, and if it works out, uh, you know, that'll be awesome. And, you know, another, uh, another opportunity to rock the gospel. That's what it's about. And, um, so yeah, that's, we got those things to marinate on. You guys have an awesome rest of your Thursday night. Thank you so much for, uh, tripping with me. Thank you, guys. I see some, you know, some, uh, good lucks in, uh, and uh and 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 whatnot right on and uh, all right i will see you guys on thursday